The difference between a pretty average video and a pretty amazing video is just a series of quite small differences. Take a video like this for example. You could very easily turn the same video with the same clips into something like this. The only difference is a couple of very small little tricks that I'm going to share with you guys in today's video. A shout out to Filmora from Wondershare, which is an awesome editing platform. And we're going to talk about them a little bit later on in this video. Tip one is knowing your footage. Making selects and cutting up your raw footage can be done in a whole lot of different ways. I like to keep it really simple and just drop all of my footage onto the timeline. Then I'm going to go through it and make make my selects, cutting out anything that I know I don't need and picking the best take if I had a shot that I did multiple takes for. Once I've done that, I duplicate all of my selects into a new little area and then I'll go through it again, further cutting it down, even finer, making sure that I absolutely have like the gold nuggets of everything that I filmed that day. I'll then duplicate that again and now I have the absolute best of the best, almost like a little sizzle reel and I can use that in my final edit. Whenever I'm editing, I can quickly go back there, jump over and get all of the clips that I want. The reason I like to do it this way is because if I do by some chance need some of the footage from the clips that I didn't have in my final selects, I can easily go back there and refer to those and get anything else extra that I might need and just drop it into my final timeline. This is what works for me and I find it a really nice way to just get through all of those selects in a very simple and well organized format. Tip two is editing with music. And notice how I didn't say editing to music. When editing with music, you should use something that is gonna enhance your video to kind of make it a little bit better. I so often see beginner editors using uh, soundtracks that are just way overpowering for the footage and something maybe way too intense. The music is kind of driving the whole piece that you guys are editing. I think music is a supporting element and your video should be a pretty good like standalone piece and then just using that music to further enhance it and make it a little bit better. Your music should complement the footage but not overpower it. Another key thing when editing with music is that of course you should be editing to the beat and making your cuts on the beats of the music that you've selected but don't be too predictable mix it up a little bit cut on those beats and then maybe let a clip play for a little bit longer then have a little quick section don't make every single one in the same area otherwise the viewer knows when that next cut is going to be happening and it makes it predictable and kind of a little bit boring. Tip three is gonna to be to cut the fat. A lot of beginner editors just end up leaving way too much of the extra footage in. Whether it's shots that are held for too long or clips that all look too similar to one another, all used in the same area, it's really important to just get rid of all of that stuff that isn't absolutely vital to convey the message you guys are trying to tell. Something that might be a three minute video could actually end up being a one minute edit and it's gonna be a lot more entertaining. This can be harder said than done because if you spend a whole lot of time capturing a certain shot and you are somewhat attached to it, you are more likely to include it in the edit. But it's important to be a little bit relentless when it comes to making those cuts. If it doesn't contribute to your video or further push the story that you're trying to convey, just ditch it. Even if it's a crazy cool shot, if it doesn't make the video any better, cut it out. If you guys have noticed, I've been showing you these techniques in a platform called Filmora from Wondershare. If you guys are getting into editing or looking for the perfect editing software for you, check out Filmora. They have some amazing tools to do all of the edits that you guys could possibly want to do. You can do some really nice color grading. You can add in LUTs. You should be using my LUTs. You can find them in the top of the description. <laughs> and you can use Filmora to do all of the editing that you guys would like to do. They have some really awesome plans to start you guys out. And if you want to find out anything more about Filmora, they're going to be linked in the top of the description. Tip four is going to be flow and pacing. Now, 
Here it's really important to have variety and not just variety in your clips but a variety in the speed of which your video kind of plays out. If you want to make a fast paced edit that's awesome and you should absolutely go for it but if your video is turned up to a 10 the whole time that 10 quickly becomes the base level for your video and it's not really fast paced and exciting anymore it's just kind of flat lining like that so if you want a fast paced edit maybe think of how you can have different pockets of speed throughout that video maybe it starts slow and builds up into something really fast having somewhat of a crescendo and then maybe dies off towards the end as you come to your conclusion or however you would be ending that video however you choose to make that different wave it's very important that your edits pacing and flow is a wave and not just one consistent speed throughout that video it's going to become very boring if you think about an edit like this you could have something slow in the beginning so that that kind of becomes the baseline and then you boost that up to something really fast and then you slow it down all of a sudden again. Slowing it down means that the viewer is going to think that they need to pay more attention to something that's happening in that area because it's slow, it must be important and their attention is going to be drawn into that. The fast paced edit is going to be really fun and lots of things happening. It's going to be stimulating because it's very different from what's been happening in the beginning where it was a little bit slower as well but however you want to do that and you can have as many different little waves as you want but don't have the same thing going the same speed the whole time Tip five is gonna be using B-roll. And I know these days, myself included, the term B-roll gets thrown around very loosely. But B-roll essentially is supplementary footage that you use over your A-roll of relevant subject matter to further tell or explain what you're trying to say. So if I had this entire video, just this shot right here, which is my A-roll of my talking head for five or 10 minutes, it's gonna be very boring. So it's very, very important that you use B-roll over the top of your A-roll so that you can just keep it nice and interesting for the viewer that's watching. You can do this in any way that you want. If you're talking about a camera, get some B-roll of you using that camera maybe. If you are talking about a beach, get some footage of you on the beach, whatever. Whatever you're talking about, make sure it's relevant. You can also do this with graphics. And you can also do it with text on screen. Something I like to kind of stick to roughly is that you shouldn't have one single clip playing out for more than five to eight seconds on your video. Otherwise it starts to get boring and you'll see that the interest kind of tapers off in that area. Once you have finished creating your video, something that I really like to do is show my video to someone else and I'll stand there and watch while they're watching it. And the first thing this does is kind of puts me in the position that I'm watching my video through their perspective. And then I'll be very analytical of where the attention is gonna be held and where I might start to lose attention. You can also keep an eye on that person that's watching your video and see where they might kind of start to like get a little bored, maybe a little distracted, and then you know that those areas need to be worked on a little bit more. Either you need to cut some of that fat out like we spoke about in the other tip, or you just need to have more B-roll or something to stimulate the viewer while you're talking. Tip six is gonna be direction of movement. This is one that I do not see a lot of intermediate and beginner editors really paying attention to even some more advanced editors are seeming to leave this step out. Basically what I mean is, I like to keep my direction of movement consistent going in the same direction throughout my edits, or at least throughout the sequence of clips in that edit. Maybe you have different sequences from different locations and whatnot, you can have different directions of movement. If you have someone going left to right in your frame and then the next shot after that in your sequence is something going right to left it doesn't look weird it looks like they're going the same direction towards each other otherwise it gives the impression that you went somewhere and now you going back the opposite way so keep the subject moving in the same direction throughout your sequence very nice way to do it is just think left to right like reading a book get the person moving in that way. It can be the other way as well, it doesn't matter, but just as long as each clip in that sequence is the same direction. Another way I like to do this is actually with my camera movement, and if I have one shot where I have somewhat of a slide going left to right, 
if you have a cut to another clip that is going left to right, it gives off a feeling of being much more seamless. It's something you wouldn't really notice if someone wasn't doing it, but if someone was doing it, the whole video would just feel smoother and flow a lot nicer. So that's something that's really, really important to try and master and you can really get creative with it as well. It's not as simple as just keeping your subject going in the same way. You can get really creative with camera movement like this as well. Tip seven is gonna be color grading. Now, I know you guys have heard about color grading and I'm sure you're doing it on your videos, at least I hope but it's really important to avoid poor colors in your videos. Make sure you focus on skin tones. It's one of the most noticeable areas of where your colors might be wrong. It's all good and well if you want a stylistic color grade, but if your skin tones are blown out and you look like an Oompa Loompa or a tomato, or you just look sick because of how desaturated or green your skin is, it's really not a good look and a dead giveaway for a rookie editor. So spend some time mastering your colors, watch some color grading tutorials. I have some up on this channel that will cover everything like skin tones and how you can use the scopes to make sure that your skin tones are sitting in the right areas. You can also use LUTs. I have my own LUTs like I mentioned, they're gonna be in the description. But when you do use LUTs, don't crank them up all the way so that it's way like overpowering the footage. I know it's so tempting to just put the intensity like way up or any of your color sliders just a little too far to the right hand side. Try and avoid this. Don't oversaturate it, but don't undersaturate it. Same with contrast. You want to keep everything quite nice and subtle. If you want something more stylistic, play around with your highlights and shadow colors maybe a little bit and leave your mid-tones somewhat in the middle. That's where your skin tones are usually gonna lie and you really don't wanna be changing the skin tone too much. No matter how sweet your teal and orange lot is, remember that if your skin tones are looking just weird, you're doing something wrong. Focus on those skin tones. That's gonna be it for this one. I hope you found these editing tips useful and I hope you can apply them into the next project that you guys are working on. Remember, if you wanna check out Filmora, they are gonna be linked in the top of the description. This entire video, as well as all of the demonstrations that I showed you in this video were done using Filmora and I'm sure you guys will find it really beneficial. You can also check out my LUTs. Just don't put the intensity up like a crazy amount and make them look bad. They're really sweet if you turn them down and they're also 25% off. See you guys in the next one. <laughs>